Hey everybody, Luke Thompson from Action VFX, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this eye reflection VFX shot inside of Adobe After Effects. Now I will go ahead and start by saying, as with any VFX shot, this can really be done a million different ways. So I'm not saying, hey, this is the one way to do it, but this is just how I found to be a really fast way to achieve this eye reflection replacement result. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in to After Effects. Okay, so we've got our background plate here. So for this specific shot, he's actually reacting to a ghost that is standing in the middle of a fire as he's exiting this creepy haunted house. So basically all I did for this was I took the final shot of her actually standing in the fire and that's what we're gonna use as our source for this reflection. So starting off, I'll always reduce noise using reduce noise from neat video uh, to help clean up the footage help us get a better track and overall a better comp so i did that and then i jumped right into mocha pro to track each eyeball this track doesn't have to be anything super crazy thankfully our actor for this shot didn't blink which was intentional for this and if your actor's blinking then you will have to do some roto the eyelids closing just to really sell the effect to make it look seamless so once each of my eyes were tracked, I just created nulls inside of After Effects that I then tied to the Mocha Pro layers. So once I have the tracking data for each eye, I've kind of just named them appropriately so I don't get confused. So first I'll isolate these tracks, select them, and then click Export Tracking Data. We're gonna use the After Effects CS3 corner pin uh, that supports motion blur. We'll just copy that to our clipboard close out of this again this is the left eye and what we're going to do is create a new null object make sure we're at the appropriate time frame and then we're just going to paste our corner pin keyframes from mocha here so i'll press u to reveal all of the keyframes attached and you can see that it does have that tracking data there so we'll do the same thing for our left eye, and then we'll make sure that our layers are appropriately named so we don't lose track of them. So now that we have our layers named for our actual tracking data, what we're gonna do next is bring in the actual asset for the video clip that will be reflecting in his eye. So as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty creepy looking shot. For the final version of this, we actually have added some camera shake but this version is still just static and locked off which obviously works better for the eye replacement because it's going to have its own motion attached to it so from here all we're going to do is hit s for scale we're going to drop this down to about 20 percent and i'm just going to place it over this left eye at first i'm also going to drop the opacity down just so i can kind of match it up a little better Just makes it easier to see. Okay, gonna drop this back down to 10. Again, lowering the opacity a little further so I can see positionally what this is gonna look like. Okay, so right now, it's probably about the best spot that we've got so far. So we're sitting at about 10. I'm gonna bump it up to 12 just to get those edges out of there. So now all that we're gonna do is I'll name this left eye source. So we know which is gonna be tied to, and then we're going to the parent and link, and we're just gonna tie this to the left eye track. I'm gonna raise my opacity back up so we can see. And if this is working properly, then this box will be attached to the track inside of our eye. There we go. That's locked on really well. This thankfully isn't a really complicated track when it comes to this. So from this part, essentially all we're gonna do is clean this up to where it looks a little more realistic. So like an actual eye reflection. I'm gonna drop this down to 30%, bring up my pen tool, and then just create a mask around the iris here. I'm gonna go ahead, feather this out to 30. 
And then again, we can kind of adjust this as we go. Doesn't have to be perfect. Bring this up a little sharper. So I'll raise our opacity here so we can still see. So again, we're looking good on the track and this main portion now is just blending it into the eye. Another problem that you'll see with this footage is we use some onset practical lighting near the actor's face. And what that did was it actually created these really harsh uh, reflections of the light bulbs in his eye. So for this portion, I had to take these into Photoshop and just basically remove those. So how I did that was I basically just found a still frame that looked good to me and brought it into Photoshop and then painted out the light bulbs. But the tricky part is the lighting reflection is just constantly changing with his face. So that was kind of tricky to navigate. But all that I had to do was change it up with the blending modes. So you can see here, I'm going to be dropping this layer here I've got them split up for left and right eye so as you can see it's not perfect if you really get in here and are looking around the iris with much detail but all I did was paint out that one layer change the blending mode and then change the tracking information to that same left eye track that we had originally you can see there's some certain sections where it still comes out just a little bit but since we're going to be overlaying another image on this, uh, I'm not too concerned with this. Okay, so I've got my left eye narrowed down here. The opacity is set to 40%, so we're not, you know, all the way up. The blending mode is set to add, and the mask feather is set to 300 pixels. So it's going to have a nice soft edge around here. Once the left side's done, we'll essentially duplicate the same thing on the right side. So I know realistically this would probably look a lot softer in real life, but kind of for some extra cinematic punch, we just want it to be a little more visible for what it is. So again, just any small details that we can find to kind of help better blend this in. I added a slight blur in here, just a 20 to kind of help blend it in at least a little more with his eye so it doesn't look quite as sharp so really quick let's say for instance that you're not wanting to put a reflection in the subject's eye but you're wanting to replace it um, with a completely maybe it's a completely different color or maybe some other type of effect i'm going to disable these photoshop paint layers that i've had and going to disable the reflection but all you'll need to do for that is we'll create a new solid and let's go with like a bluish look. Let's name it blue. Gonna drop the opacity back to five, just so that I can create a mask around this. And I'm gonna select my pen tool again, and similar to how we created the mask for our footage layer, we're going to do the same on this shape. Again, just a really quick set. I'm going to raise that to 300 and bring our opacity in. Okay, 300 was way too much. Let's try 30. And for our blending mode, let's do overlay. So you can kind of see it's at least retaining a bit more um, back there. And again, we're just going to parent and link this to left eye track so that it will hold to the footage. And then if I really wanted to, I could perfect that reflection and just make sure that the eye is actually taken care of and a bit more natural looking. So we can always tone things like that back. So that's 50% opacity. And it's a really subtle effect, but if we want to make them green, maybe red, kind of shift some stuff around, 
You can do that very easily using these same techniques. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you and you've learned something new. Uh, as I said, there's always a million different ways to achieve an effect. So if you would do this differently or have some tips or tricks for us, please let us know in the comments. We would absolutely love to hear those. Also, we always wanna hear your tutorial ideas. So if there's something specific you want us to teach you or walk through, uh, please let us know that as well. As always, I'm Luke Thompson for actionvfx.com.